Hey guys, I'm Bella, the Maker Mama boss lady behind Fiber and Fox, and I am here today, finally, with another pattern drop. Today we are talking Fields Cardigan. That was horrible, but I'm really excited. This one has been in the works for a long time, so I cannot wait to tell you about it. Just real quick, um, down below this video, you're going to be able to find in the little down bar, click down, read more, show more thing. You know where it is by now. Uh, the link to the pattern, uh, everything that I'm going to talk about as far as resources, a blog post with more info uh, that you're going to want to check out, as well as any place you might want to find me, Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, my blog, all of the things. So let me tell you without further ado about the Fields Cardigan. I will be putting photos and hopefully maybe some video as well throughout this uh, video to show you what this cardigan looks like because I am in no place to like stand up and show you. But here, Fields Cardigan, here it is. Ta-da! And there's another one hanging up back there. Uh, but it is a v-neck and yes, it's crochet. It's one of those, wait, is that, that's crochet kind of designs that I really love creating. Um, I'll hold this one up for you. It's a v-neck. It's got buttons. It's a real like cozy, I'm calling it like grandpa Mr. Roger style, although Mr. Rogers definitely didn't wear v-neck button up cardigans, but it just be, look, it has that feel to it. That cozy casual look that you can des definitely dress up, dress down. Um, really beautiful stitch pattern. I'm showing you on the pillier of the two cardigans, but really beautiful stitch pattern, unique construction, and I am just all sorts of in love with it. Um, and I, I cannot wait to share it with you. It has been a long time coming. Let me tell you, I guess, about the inspiration first. We're gonna cover inspiration, we're gonna cover yarn. Uh, tester photos, sizing, what's included with the pattern, maybe a coupon code, so you're gonna wanna stick around. But we'll start out with inspiration. This one doesn't have like a huge moving backstory. Some of my things have a lot more depth and meaning to them. This, um, the name Fields, I pulled because I thought the way that the stitches ran, um, it's kind of, I'll talk about it more, but the way that the stitches run this way, um, I thought it looked like fields, particularly on this yellow one, like fields of wheat um, or like furrows. So I went back and forth on a couple more complicated names, harder to say names, but Fields just kind of felt right. So Fields Cardigan it is. The yarn from the original, let me grab the tags here. The yarn from the original one, uh, basically this cardigan has been in the works, or at least in my mind since 2018. It's been in the works as a pattern, I think since May of 2021, and it's now January of 2022. So it's been a long time coming this one. But this main yarn um, used on this yellow one, is Life in the Long Grass in the colorway Gorse. Um, and just a quick story behind this. My parents went on a trip to London and I think I think it was 2018. It may have been 2017. <laughs> 2018, I believe. Um, and they were going to be visiting Loop London and I kind of sent them with a shopping list. I had gotten in contact with the owner of the shop beforehand and was like, hey, do you happen to have this yarn in stock? I saw it on the website, wanted to know if they had a sweater quantity. And she was like, oh yeah, sure, I'll set it aside for you. And this was like, a month or two in advance and like I hadn't paid for it or anything. So she like set it aside like with my name and my parents just like showed up and were like, hey, do you have Bella's yarn? It was amazing. Um, so great customer experience there from across the pond. But um, yeah, I just, I thought this was such a beautiful color. I don't know how readily available this is in the US. I think there are some yarn shops that carry it. Um, but I did check this color is still available on this website. So if you wanted to order from Life in the Long Grass, you can. Um, but I, I love the mustard yellow color and I had had it in my stash for years wanting to design a cardigan. I knew I could make or crochet or even knit um, somebody else's design, but at the time I really had only, I maybe had designed one garment. I'm not even sure if I had at the time of getting the yarn, but I wanted to be like a fingering weight crochet yarn designer. So this was like my goal project. <laughs> like when people buy like an outfit that they want to fit into when they lose the weight or like goal weight outfit, like that kind of thing. This was like my goal, like I'm going to make this one day project. So it feels really nice to finally have <laughs> done that. And the yarn just like, it just sat there for a while because I was so afraid of not doing it justice. I didn't want to do like a so-so garment with it. And this was very much a make the thing you wish existed in the world kind of design. I wanted a gar cardigan like this and crochet. I had found lots of knit ones, but hadn't really found a crochet one that spoke to me. So I made it. So I hope you guys love it as much as I do because I'm just, I'm so thrilled with it. Let's talk about the cardigan itself and construction. Oh, and I should mention this other red one. I did make a second one and this is in fiber for the people in the colorway chili. 
and I think I also failed to tell you that the contrast color on this first one, the main color is the Life in the Long Grass, but this contrast color is Fiber for the People in the colorway. Leather, except it's an older version of the color leather, so it actually looks different now. It's not the same um, rusty looking situation, but I thought they complemented each other beautifully, so I put them together. The cardigan itself, construction wise, is constructed in panels, um, which I know is not everyone's favorite, but it's totally worth it for the structure of the garment, and it, it just turns out beautifully. So it is in panels, um, and the reason that it's not worked in like the round and then shaped is because you're actually going to be working this way. This is how the crochet stitch runs, and then seaming it rotated. So that's how you get that rose going this way situation. Um, which I think really makes the cardigan and gives it more of that, wait, is that knitter crochet kind of look? Um, so you are going to be seaming two front panels and a back panel, and then the sleeves are just worked onto the body. Um, and mine are made, and it's noted in the pattern that they are like an extra long sleeve. I have really long arms. I have a really long torso. Um, but the sleeves are worked in such a way that you can easily try them on as you go. So if this isn't a length that you love, or if my freakishly long arms are not your arms, you can easily alter the sleeves and it's also very easy in the pattern to change um, maybe your body size versus your sleeve size. Um, all the measurements are in there so you can compare and see. You can easily size up on a sleeve or slice, size down on a sleeve or whatever you need to do and combine kind of body and sleeve sizes together. Um, so that, I'm looking at my notes over here to make sure I get it for you, but um, construction wise, highly, highly, I mean, any garment pattern, I'm going to recommend you do a gauge swatch to get a good fit, but because of this, um, way that we're rotating the panels and there's lots of info in the pattern on it. Uh, I, you really, you really should gauge swatch, like really do a gauge swatch, block it, let it dry, measure it. Um, cause that's going to give you really the best fit. Um, all the math and the measurements and whatnot in the pattern have been tested, tech edited and are, are a good fit. Um, so if you do the gauging, as required in the pattern, it should be a fantastic fit for you. But I really, really want to encourage you not to skip that step because I think a lot of times people maybe pay attention more to um, like stitch count, but because we're rota rotating this, row count is really, really going to matter as well. So do it and get gauge to the very best of your ability. I would encourage you. As far as fit, it is a two to four inches of positive ease. So it that just means that it's two or to four inches larger than your actual body size, your bust size. So there's just like ever so slightly a little bit extra room on the side. And the sizing of the pattern itself uh, runs extra small up to 4XL. I'm going to encourage you to either go check out Ravelry and Etsy um, for all the measurements and yardages and whatnot um, or the blog post. I don't like rambling a lot of numbers off in these videos because I feel like it just gets confusing, but it is a size inclusive pattern. It fits a um, actual bust of 28 inches to 56 inches, I believe. And then the finished garment is 32 inches to 60 inches, depending on your size. Um, and like I said, it's easy to combine sleeves and body sizes as well to make that fit you as well as possible because not everybody's body is, you know, the crochet standard or whatever. So. You can make it fit for you very easily. Um, the pattern has a detailed tutorial on how to do the buttons. Um, and also you can pick how many buttons you like, depending on your size or um, what size buttons you'd like to use. Um, so I have like a formula in there for doing the buttons. And yeah, I love this, this ribbing detail. I think that really contributes to the weight. Is it knit or crochet feel again? Um, looks so sharp with the buttons. And then I love, this bottom edge with the curve, like that is like my favorite part. I've used that in a couple of my designs and I just, I think it looks really clean and really beautiful and I love it. So that is a little bit about the, the build or the construction of the cardigan. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave me a comment. I'd be happy to answer. This is the part where I usually talk about the yarn, but we already covered that in the inspiration story. Um, but like I said, this is yarn that may or may not be available to you either location wise or budget wise. Um, you do not have to use the yarns that I used in the pattern at all. As long as you are able to meet gauge, it is a yarn, um, it is a fingering weight design. If I haven't said that yet, I really should have, but I design a lot in fingering weight and I know to some crocheters that's like, oh, that's, that's tiny. Like that's for knitters. I don't know. No, no. Like, you can do it. It might be a challenge if it's your first time, um, but it's no different than working with a larger yarn and a larger hook. It's just, it's just smaller. The technique is the same. It's just smaller. Um, and it creates a beautiful fit and a beautiful drape and just a really like wearable fabric. 
Um, and again, that like knit like feel, which I just so love. So I would encourage you if you've never worked in fingering weight yarn to give it a try. Um, either this design, one of my other designs, or some other fabulous fingering weight yarn design. Um, fingering weight yarn also goes by the name of sock weight yarn. Uh, it's a number one weight or a fine weight. Um, some countries call it four ply. Again, any questions, I'd be happy to help. Um, but all the yardages and whatnot are listed in the pattern, so you can pick out a yarn that is going to be perfect for you. I'm not going to ramble off yardages here because you'll just be confused. So go check out the blog post or the Etsy or Ravelry listing, and it has all of the yardages, how many skeins, all of that sort of thing. Go check it out there. That will help you on that information. And I also want to mention, um, besides you not needing to use this yarn, you don't have to use indie dyed yarn. I know a lot of times crocheters are, um, again, think that that's a thing for knitters. I like to really encourage that, and I like to support the indie dyed community, especially in these times where it's, it's hard to be a small business. Um, so I love supporting that when I can. Um, but you do not have to. Testers that test for me do not have to, and I have suggestions in the blog post as well for some other more budget-friendly, readily available yarns, either at yarn stores or like through um, We Crochet or Knit Picks. Um, so I don't, I don't have all of the options, but there are definitely options for you if you don't want to buy Indie Dyed, and you can also check out the testers' pages, um, project pages. They're going to be linked in that blog post as well, or on Ravelry, um, so you can see what yarns they specifically use, if any of their yarns, which I'll show you in a little bit, speak to you. I like to give you a little bit of a better idea of what's included with your purchase of the pattern. So obviously you're gonna get the fully written, um, fully tested, fully tech edited pattern. Uh, it's written in US standard crochet terms, um, all written out, very detailed, and a lot of info in there to help you get things right, get the best size. There's a schematic, I make really cute schematics. Like that is one of the things I'm most proud of. Like it's not just a black and white, it's a cute schematic. And it has all the numbers on basically any measurement in the pattern that you might need. Um, so really detailed there. And again, that's really helpful if you wanna combine sizes and see like maybe like arm measurements versus bust measurements, all of that. It's all in there. Uh, really helpful to get you a perfect size. Um, all of the yardages, all the yarn info, all of that is in there. All of the fit info, like I said, it's an extra small to 4XL, so all the size inclusive, all the numbers are in there. It's not just like bus size. It's all the numbers. So I find that really helpful. And I also have a lot of uh, photos. I was going to say a lot of patterns throughout. It's one pattern. <laughs> a lot of photos throughout uh, to help you along the way as far as how to rotate the the swatch and measure and uh, how to do the ribbing. Uh, there's photos with the buttons. There's photos uh, with all the fit and sizes and um, full modeled photos of the garment so you can see. And again, check out tester photos if you need some more inspiration there. Um, but yeah, I try to make it a really visually helpful pattern. This one doesn't have any direct video tutorials on how to make the sweater because it is a basic stitch. Um, the construction, like I said, is a little unique with the turning, but that doesn't require a video. I have very detailed instructions and photos to help you. Um, the ribbing, there's info in there. And yeah, there's nothing like super complicated. All of the testers, um, we, we settled on intermediate just to be safe, but I would say, and a lot of testers agreed, that it's probably an advanced, an adventurous van advanced beginner. That was hard to say. Um, if you're willing to do the work as far as the seaming and the gauge swatching and just attention to detail. It's it's not a hard pattern. It's just fingering weight yarn, which you know, that's not like a skill level, but people are put off by it for some reason. Don't be. Like you can you can crochet with tiny yarn. I believe in you. I love it. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not a hard pattern and it's the same stitch throughout other than like doing the ribbing. It's very repetitive and you can definitely get into a flow. Once you get the main stitch down, you get your gauge and all of that. Um, so somewhere between advanced beginner and immediate Inter intermediate. I'm just making up words now. I promise the pattern is clearer than me talking. Um, fully tested, fully tech edited, really clear in tip top shape for you. And there's also videos in there as well um, on how to add a project to Ravelry if that's something you're not familiar with and how to block, wet block stuff if that's something you haven't done before, how to wet block a finished item. Um, so I try to make sure that there's lots of resources in there to help you along the way. But if ever you have a question, feel free to email me at bella at fiberandfox.com. I'm always happy to help and troubleshoot stuff with you if we have to. But I think this one went really well in testing and was very smooth and tech editing. So I think... I think it'll be in fabulous shape for you to get started. My favorite part is always sharing tester photos with you. It gives me such joy to see a pattern come to life. Like, 
and it's always just a sigh of relief of like, okay, I made this and it made sense to me, but when 15 to 20 other people can make it, it's like, okay, we made a sweater. We can do this. Um, so it's, it's just such a joy. And I had a great group of testers and they worked with me through a couple of holidays and I really appreciate that because that's a huge time commitment and to do a fingering weight size inclusive garment is definitely a commitment and I appreciate them. They were fabulous and so many of them came up with color combos that I wouldn't have thought of. A lot of testers did like the, the red version that I have here is a solid, all solid color um, without the contrast or you can, you know, work it in the contrast, totally up to you, the ribbing. Um, but there's just so much inspiration in looking at the tester photos. Now I'm like, oh, I want that color. Oh, I want to do that. That looks so good. <laughs> like, no, I want more. I have two. I probably don't need more. Um, but I hope it gives you some inspiration uh, to be able to see it on all sorts of people and in all sorts of different yarn choices. So I'm going to put in a, a tester slideshow, I suppose, here and give you a whole bunch of inspiration. If you want to see their yarns or information or measurements or anything directly, you can check out the Ravelry project pages, like I said, and it's all linked, all of their social media and whatnot um, for those individual testers is also linked in the blog post if you want to stalk them a little bit. <laughs> So I hope that gave you some inspiration to make your own fields cardigan, uh, either shop your stash, go out and get some new yarn, combine some colors. Uh, I know that the testers have given me so much inspiration to make so many more. So I hope that it did the same for you. Uh, I like to give you guys also with the release of a new pattern, um, I'll put the dates on the screen in case anything changes on my end. But for the first two weeks of the pattern release, I do a coupon code on Ravelry. Um, if that's an accessibility issue for you, I'd be happy to accommodate. Shoot me an email and we can work something out. Ravelry just kind of works best on my end as far as keeping track of things. Um, but I will put it on the screen, the dates. You can use the code FROLIC10. I'll also put that on the screen in case you have any doubts on how to spell FROLIC, as in FROLIC through the fields, 10. Uh, so you can get 10% off of this garment or this pattern to make this garment. I'm not selling the garment. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what you make. I, if I didn't make it clear and I haven't said Etsy and Ravelry enough, that is where the pattern is currently available. Uh, it may make its way to Lovecrafts, but I've kind of neglected Lovecraft. Was it Lovecraft? Lovecrafts? I never know. Um, recently has had a lot of neglect. Might get it up there eventually. And somewhere in 2022, the goal is to have all of my patterns on my own website as well. So if you're watching in the future, you can check out there too. Um, links will be down below. But I, I cannot wait to see what you make with this one. This one is like, I mean, all of my patterns are really precious and special to me, but this is one that was like, 
like a like goals for me um, to to make this happen and to make a cardigan and to make it size inclusive and to make it like well fitting and not like oh that's crochet but wait that's crochet <laughs> that just gives me so much joy when I make knitters jealous it's basically my business goal. <laughs> Um, so I cannot wait to see what you make with this one. If you are making one either in progress or uh, finished, I would love it if you tag me on Instagram. I am fiber.and.fox there, and you can use the hashtag Fields Cardigan, and you can also always use hashtag Fiber and Fox Makes as well. I love following along there and seeing what you guys are making from my patterns. Um, it, it's just such a joy. I really appreciate it. Even if you watch this video and you're not making the pattern, like liking it, leaving a comment, sharing it, all of that makes a really big difference for me. This is my livelihood and it's such a like amazing blessing to be able to stay home, raise my daughter, make awesome stuff and share it with you guys, um, to take string and a stick and create a really fabulous garment and then see other people make it. It's just, I cannot. I cannot explain it. It's amazing. And I am so grateful. So I'm really looking forward to seeing your Fields Cardigans and I will catch you guys soon in an upcoming podcast or another pattern drop. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being my people. I appreciate you. Bye. <music>